Hey folks, how you doing? Um, we're simulcasting on three different YouTube channels today. Rock History Music, Rock History Book, and Rock History Canada. And before we get to our subject, which is Ronnie King, who passed away at the age of 76, it was uh, March 4th. We'll just let you know that, uh, uh, just for, because there was always a little bit of confusion concerning our channels, the Rock History Canada channel is, of course, for Canadian artists that uh, may not be well-known outside of Canada. That should come on in about a second. It's it's usually, it, it's got a little uh, uh, pause rejigging. on it. Rejigging, got it. Yeah, it's oh, rejigging. Yeah. And so Rock History Canada is for that reason. Like I said, before we get to what we're going to talk about today because we've got an interview with Ronnie King just a few months ago I did an interview with him and uh, he was just really excited about uh, some of the things that that were coming up that they were planning a tour the last a, fi a farewell tour and there was a there's a statement that Shannon's going to read that the their spokesman uh, and or family uh, gave out concerning Ronnie King uh, it is with sadness and love that we must announce the passing of our longtime friend and bandmate, Cornelius Van Sprang, known to most as Ronnie King. The message read, Ronnie died yesterday, which would have, he actually did pass away on March 4th. Um, died at the Peter Lougheed Hospital in Calgary. The sudden drastic turn in his health took us all by surprise. As little as three weeks ago, he was looking forward to doing one final tour with the Stampeders and was in a positive and optimistic state of mind. Sadly, it was not to be. Interesting thing about Ronnie King, and you'll, you'll hear this from the clips. I think I saw the Stampeders, oh, I'm guessing, three or four times. The second concert I ever saw at St. Clair Rink in Newcastle, New Brunswick, which is now Miramichi, uh, would have been, I think, in 73, 74, I'm guessing. And Abraham's Children was the first concert I ever saw. And then it was Stampeders. And Stampeders were like this big band. It was, And I don't mean that in size because it was only three guys. Um, Rich Dotson, Kimberly, and Ronnie King. And they started in, I think it was 64 in Calgary here. I mean, the Peter Lougheed Hospital where he passed away is just like... What thirty minutes away from here, and uh, when when I talked to Ronnie, I was actually I would have done it in person because he's from here, but we were living in Moncton, New Brunswick at the time, so we didn't. You know, that was a long way. So uh, it was sad. The, the fact whenever you hear something like he was looking forward to to going out and doing that final tour, and he had mentioned during the conversation with me that that Rich Dodson, who left Stampeders mm -hmm. in not the mid 70s but near i think uh, 76 77 uh don't quote me uh he went off and became a producer and a solo artist had a few solo hits across the country stan peters i should point out because we are being simulcast on our mostly american viewed channels rock history music and rock history uh, uh book is that the stan peters had two hit, two hits in the u.s sweet city woman which was a number eight hit in the u.s and um, uh, Hit the Road Jack, which is made famous by Ray Charles and a whole bunch of other people. But 19 hits. 19 hits in Canada. 19 top 40 hits. And we're going to talk about some of those. Um, but let me just get to some of the history. You know, he, getting back to what I was going to say a while ago, when you listen to Ronnie King talk, I mean, the guy is really happy. He's just always smiling and always joking. And he was, he played that role in the band. All three guys, and I interviewed Kim Burley too, Kimball, uh, uh, their drummer. But to have a, a trio like that, a power trio that, that when every single one of them could harmonize with each other, every one of them could sing lead vocals. But let me just get to, we're just learning, uh, learning some of the software here, but we're getting to it. Uh, and there he is. Um, thank you, Shannon, for putting this together. You're welcome. Their, their first big hit, like I said, was uh, Sweet City Woman, which was a number eight hit in the U.S. And number one in Canada. It ended up being their biggest hit that they ever had. And and you see the guys, they're, they're such dudes, you know, and they were always fun. There's Ronnie. Look at the look on his face. You know, he's always playing the role of the jokesters. There's Rich Dotson beside him, a Kim Burley in the middle there. But Canadian icons like that, so many people love the Stampeders. And it's nice to know that our American neighbors knew the band really well. And I mean, they were, 
like a two-hit wonder in the U.S., like I mentioned before. Uh, let me get my camera back. Sweet City Woman and uh, uh, um, Hit the Road Jack. But let's get to... Let's get to... Uh, oh, well, you got some comments that we should... Uh, we've got a super chat, the cut of the jib. Thank you so much for your donation. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Kim Trickle. Hi, Shannon and John. Hi, Kim. Uh, the the cut of the jib, yeah, 1964 to 1977, and then they regroup, regrouped uh, in 1992. Yeah. Uh, Diane Smith, R.I.P. King, sad in today remembering Randy Meisner's birthday. Oh, is that right? I did, you know what? We, we were get, we're getting back to doing the Canadian and the American uh, Today in History. We're going to do some uh, on the Canadian channel because we're, we're Canadian. But the, as most of you know, the majority of our audience is in the U.S. Like It goes from 90, sometimes up to 95% of the folks because we cover a lot of U.S. Uh, 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 bands. So let's listen to let's listen to the man himself. This is um, uh, where should I start? Okay, there's a this is in the beginning of the Stampeders career where things were starting to take off, and they were meeting a lot of big artists. Like I didn't know this story till I talked to their drum a drummer Kim Burley, and then I asked for Ronnie to reiterate a little bit of it. We're not going to produce. We're not going to. Uh, have Kim on this uh, segment, but pretty sure, I mean, I'm, I might try to get Rich Dotson so we'd have all three of them, but it's not a time to reach out to Rich Dotson right now. So uh, this is Ronnie King, who we lost. How old was he? 76? 70, 76. 76. Mm -hmm. Talking about an interesting rock and roll incident. Early 70s. I talked to, to Kim about this, or Kimball, and uh, okay, I've got here written down, Whiskey A Go Go, L.A., Hollywood, you met uh, Who drummer Keith Moon, invited you back to a party in Beverly Hills, uh, Wilshire Hotel, Rod Stewart, Ringo Starr, and there was an incident, I guess, at the hotel, and everyone ended up wearing Stan Peters shirts. Like, what, what, what makes sense of that to me? We, uh, we were in LA to do a promotional tour before we played the whiskey, and uh, we went to the Capitol Records building our manager had set up, right? And the entire building. And, you know, the Capitol Records building, it looks like a bunch of uh, LPs all, uh, you know, stacked on top of each other. The entire place, from the janitor to the secretaries to the CEOs, what, they were all wearing Stampeders Tour 1974. On, and we were blown away. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah. And then we, uh, long story short, we went to, uh, uh, to have dinner. Uh, with uh, several of the uh, p &R guys, you know, uh, and a uh, couple of the ladies that were also uh, present. So we went to the uh, this dinner, and there was this very gay man who was uh, just, <laughs> and I, I'm sure it was set up by the Capitol Records people because they were ch chuckling kind of under their breath, you know, and the, and the gay man was going, oh, who's that? My tip <laughs> pointing to me and stuff like that. <laughs> anyway, then uh, we decided that uh, the girls said, uh, you know, let's go to a club, but well, I know a nice place to go for a, a, a drink and a, a hot club called the Roxy. And uh, I said, yeah, I'll go. And the other two guys didn't go. They never went. I always went. <laughs> and uh, we went to the Roxy. So we walk in and we're going to get drinks. And the girls say, oh, we're going to go upstairs and see what's happening. And so on else. And we'll be right back. You order our drinks. I said, yeah, great. So they come running back, said, oh, oh you got to do it. You got to do it. It's Mooney's birthday tomorrow and Mooney and uh, so on else. You got to do it because it's, uh, I told them, uh, you know, uh, who can do your birthday? Uh, is, is there any guys with equipment in town? Yeah, the Stampeders are in town and so on. So, uh, oh, well, let me meet him. Oh, come on upstairs. So I go upstairs and meet uh, Mooney because I'm going, what's a Mooney? <laughs> Keith Moon of the Who, and uh, oh, God, yo, yeah, and he's, he's kind of blinky. <laughs> and uh, so we end up doing this uh, this party at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, the second floor of Banquet Room, and whatever it was. And I mean, every major star was there that was, uh, you know, from, uh, oh, health, uh, Redbone to uh, Mickey Dolenz uh, to uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Rod Stewart, Ronnie Wood, uh, 
<laughs> and it Man, just went on and on, right? So we did a couple of songs and what have you. And uh, so we said, well, we may as well uh, let uh, whoever wants to jam, uh, jam, we'll just, we'll just move aside. <laughs> and we did. And so uh, they, they, uh, uh, Keith Moon was quite impressed with Kim's drums because they were plexiglass see-through drums. And uh, we, were, <laughs> we were amazed to see on Midnight Special sometime later that uh, Keith Moon had a see-through drum and he had a, his floor tom was full of water with goldfish swimming around <laughs> in it. And we're going, hey, you got that from us. <laughs> that's the thing about um ronnie king and watching him he's always smiling he was always smiling and again he played that role on camera on camera on tv he he just was a, a, a funny guy i mean you'd want to party with this this dude for sure we're going to get to uh, some of the stories of the songs and at the end i also asked ronnie king what was the best and worst part of being in the band, the Stampeders? And uh, and I haven't watched this since I edited it. So I'm just putting this on. I, I don't know if you have any comments you want I to do. share. Uh, ben Patterson. Hey, Ben. I knew next to nothing about the Stampeders, but their top 40 hit, Sweet, uh, Sweet City Woman, has always given me a bittersweet, melancholy feeling from my childhood. I was only eight, but it grabbed me. You know, the, 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 the thing is, he's playing like the... Like a banjo, uh, Rich Dotson's playing the banjo in the beginning of that. You know, and anyone who might not, and we can't put it on because of copyright. But anyone who thinks they might not know the song, chances are, even if it wasn't in your in your sort of lane, you've heard the song through osmosis because it was like a number eight hit in the U.S. and then hit the road jack in the mid '70s was a hit with that Ray Charles song. Ray Charles made it popular, uh, among others. And uh, Wolfman Jack was on their version of that. And if you play that, if you go on Spotify and play that, and again, we can't do it because of... Uh because of uh, copyright. Let me know if you've got some comments. And I do. Calvin uh, Beeler. Hello, Mr. John and Miss Shan. I have the original 45 of Sweet City Woman from Bell Records. R.I.P. Mr. King. Keep up the great work, as always, and uh, God bless from Cleveland, Ohio. We're going to talk about some of their hits. 19 Canadian hits, which easily makes the Stampeders, even with half of that, they they would have become Canadian icons. I haven't seen them. I think I saw them, like I said, either three or four times. Um, once in Edmonton, and I think the three three times. Yeah, it was four times. Ask me tomorrow, I'll see. On my memory, I don't know if you remember, it's like that with concerts. Sometimes I'll forget, but I have a journal that I can go back and reference. Uh, 19 Canadian hit Sweet City Woman, as mentioned, was their biggest hit, number one in Canada. Uh, and number eight in the U.S., which says an awful lot. They followed that up with uh, Devil You in 1971. Uh, they had two hits uh, the following year in 72, Monday Morning Choo Choo. Remember that? Monday Morning Choo Choo. I can't sing. Uh, and Wild Eyes. And we've got a clip from from Ronnie King to talk about, oh, there's our dogs, uh, talk about Wild Eyes. Let me get to, there we go. With Wild Eyes, with Rich bringing that in, what, was that a an attempt to just harden the sound? Because you guys had a few good rockers. Yeah, it was indeed. Uh, Rich uh, has always uh, has always liked his own uh, rockers more so than Sweet City Woman, despite the fact that it was our biggest hit, right? And uh, it put Rich on the map, so to speak, on the songwriter's map, and. Uh, it uh, you know let's just get on with the rockers W you know uh, wild eyes uh, hit the road even uh, cover so uh, by the way I was very proud to have sung hit the road Jack the lead singer and it was number one in Holland where I was born and they were of course making a big deal yeah Dutchman is, is in a Canadian supergroup yeah and this and that so we went over there and i said hey i'm going to do all the interviews because i'm I can speak dutch still right everybody speaks 
it's English. <laughs> the with, with that song, uh, and it's strange. I didn't get it at the time. Where Wolfman Jack is calling you Cornelius. I mean, yeah. it's almost like an inside joke because we didn't have the internet back then, right? We wouldn't know these things unless you you've got a connection with the band. Um, uh, did you guys publicize that? Was that was that out there? That it was uh, your name, your real name? Well, no, we didn't. Uh... We didn't, you know, I just told Wolfman that. I was, we were playing in Saratoga Springs, New York, uh, the first annual American Song Festival. Again, huge amount of, uh, of, 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 of famous people on there from the Letterman, the Eagles, Ray Charles, Jose Feliciano. And it was just on and on, you know. And I told, I eventually told Wolfman, I said, there's so many famous people on this thing. I'm one of the only bands I never heard of. <laughs> but uh, so we're doing this and I, I phone up my babe in uh, Toronto. I said, yeah, come on down here. We're here for a whole week. And uh, so I go to meet her at the airport. Meanwhile, I've got some of the ganja. I'm always the ganja smoker. And, uh, and uh, so I had some quite powerful stuff that I bought in Portland, Oregon, where it was already a misdemeanor. <laughs> and uh, so I go to the airport and I got a couple of dubs on me and whatever. And I go to pick up my babe and uh, whatever. And I see Wolfman Jack coming out of one of the gates. And I'm always <laughs> outgoing. Hey, how do you do? You know, but his manager intercepts him. And he said, I can help you. He said, yeah, I'm uh, Ronnie King of the Stampeders. So look, the poster were we're on the same show and uh, it's nice to, I'd like to meet Wolfman. It'd be great, you know? And, uh, oh, sure. And Wolfman's kind of standing back 10 feet, rubbing his eyes. He's kind of been snoozing on the plane or whatever. And he says, uh, yeah, look, Wolf, look at it. It's all your friends, Jose Feliciano, et cetera. And he says, uh, he says, oh yeah, who's this? He says, well, this is uh, Ronnie King of the Stampeders. And Wolfman says, oh, hi, Stan. <laughs> Thinking my name was Stan Peters. <laughs> I said, no, 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 man. Look, <laughs> if you want to get real, my, my uh, Ronnie King's my stage name. My, my given, I was get, born in Holland. Cornelius Van Sprang is my given name. And, oh, Cornelius, <laughs> I'm sorry, Cornelius, uh, Stan, Ronnie, whatever the hell your name is. You wouldn't have any shit, would you? <laughs> So he says this to me, and I said, well, you came to the right person. We're all here together for a week here. Have a joint. And uh, so uh, we'll <laughs> says, oh, man. And we're, what? I said, we're all together for a week there in, in the hotel, et cetera. Oh, man, I, oh, I can see it now. 67 in cash box with a bullet. Yeah, and <laughs> he's putting his arm around me. <laughs> and we're all of a sudden, we become close friends because I had some joints. <laughs> And have had been ever since. Oh, you're one of the rare people I love, man. I mean, you're one of the grand entertainers. And uh, I, I've kept in touch with him years later, even after the Stampeders broke up. I did a house gig here in Calgary. And I said, yeah, we're wondering if you want to maybe come up and play this house gig with me. Oh, yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm not. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Man. I've been doing a lot of these gigs. And uh, <laughs> he was a party animal. So, yeah. uh more so than me, even. So that was the the that was the the road for him getting onto that record. Yeah, yeah. You know, we uh, somehow I was uh, we were recording uh, "Hit the Road, Jack" in the studio, and I was singing it, and uh, you know, cover tune. And so uh, we got to the end part, and uh, I was trying to be Ray Charles. I was scatting, you know, yeah, my baby, my baby loved me. I, I, you can't mean it, honey. And so on. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm saying, look, I'm not black. I'm not. <laughs> so, you know, so I start joking around and saying, hey, Cornelius. <laughs> oh, hey, that's funny. Let's leave that in. You know, let's phone down to L.A. and get permission from Wolfman. So so they do. And they say, oh, of course, they get down here and do the real thing. Are you crazy? Okay, so I fly down with the manager, uh, <laughs> and we we just set it all up in the studio. I flew down, by the way, with that. Uh, that was with the Toronto Maple Leafs. The whole team <laughs> was on that on that flight. But uh, so we we go down and uh, and uh, 
<laughs> record hit the road jack and wolfman's doing his thing and so on else and i'm uh, i'm you know we're doing it off the cuff just just you know and i said you know i I got an idea. Wilkman's isolated in a, a separate isolation booth, and I'm isolated, and, and the managers and people are all behind the glass and whatnot. And I said, I got an idea, Wolf. Uh, we're just wandering here, but uh, why don't you insinuate as if you're uh, as if you're you know wanting to horn in on my babe and so on else, and say, well, why don't you give me your babe's number and so on else, and uh, and I'll see what I can do. I said. You know, so so let's set it up that way. So we do it again, and uh, he never does it. You know, so they stop, <laughs> and I'm saying, well, hey, Wolf, you're not even. I, I was suggesting that maybe you would do that. <laughs> Meanwhile, the management and all the people are going. People, time is money. Time is money. <laughs> so Wolfman says, hey, Cornelius, up yours. <laughs> Just to show you how we got along. <laughs> He's, the guy's filled. He was just filled with joy when he when he talked about uh, when he talked about anything during this interview. Like you could tell, I was just you know I usually have like I, I, I'm famous for the resting bitch face when I'm talking when I'm to, to people when I'm just really listening to them, and that's because people have asked me before. It's like you you're so serious when you're doing your interviews. I'm going. But I'm really power listening, and I'm always thinking of the next question and this stuff. But, but from Ronnie King, you know, joy is the major feeling, and, and having fun of, of with life. And Shannon's got some comments from you. Uh, Fraser J covers. Hi, Fraser. Hi, hey Fraser. guys, really unusual seeing you on a Friday night live. Hope you're doing well. Oh yeah, it is Friday it night. It is Friday. We used to do this all the time on and, Friday, and usually at around well our time closer to the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Kim says, "Hey, love your Toto pictures from last night." Thanks. We Kim. went. Toto was in Calgary last night, and Shannon Forrest got us uh, some tickets, and we went backstage and had a chance to meet up with the band. Uh, music man. One of my first music concerts was the Stampeders when I was only fourteen. Great memories from their music. R.I.P. Ronnie. Music man, where are you from? I'm just kind of curious where you where you live, and we'll make make a note of that of when he comes up. Uh, uh, if if there's Canadians on here, uh, and so we obviously we have a lot of Americans who knew uh, Sweet City Woman, which was like just this their signature song, really. Even though Stampeders had so many different hits, we're going to talk about that right now. Uh, we're going through the hits, and when Ronnie talks about one of the hits, and these are long clips. Uh, Chase, actually, our son, edited this video, so I had no idea what he did with it. Because usually when you're talking about stuff, usually because of monetization, you have to beep that stuff out. So I listened to that, and I'm going, oh, okay, well, okay, we're at 1973. They had two hits in 73, Oh My Lady, which was sung by Kimberly, their drummer, and uh, Minstrel Wind. The Stampeders had uh, three hits Three hits in 74. Uh, Running Wild, Me and My Stone, which we're going to talk about with uh, with Ronnie King right now. What clip is that? We're getting used to our software, but... Uh, music Man is in beautiful Cape Breton Island. In oh! Florida. Cape Breton, we were so close yeah. to that. We moved to New Brunswick for a year. Um, but to here's yeah. Ronnie King talking about Me and My Stone, their hit. Oh, Me and My Stone. Tell me, tell me about... Great song. Love the melody, counter melody. On, you know, like just... One singing back, that's just, that's a gorgeous song. Thank you. I uh, just, it kind of just fell into place. I said it too. And I thought, gee, that needs a little bit of a pickup, uh, you know, maybe. And it just, it just all kind of all fell together, et cetera. So three parts, I thought, yeah, yeah, that could be done. I took it to the boys and said, uh, can you guys do this? And uh, we never did play it live, but uh, but uh, I was very proud to have uh, written something in the round. Burton Cummings said said to me, "Hey man, which which one of you guys wrote that song?" I said me. me. Burton says, "I've got to tell you, man, that's one of my favorite songs by the Stampeders." <laughs> I said, "Well, thank you." <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. The, 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 you know what, the strange thing of getting used to this equipment is is 
not having a, a a key where you can turn on your microphone, turn off your microphone, turn on the next thing. Uh, because of your donations, we bought a switch box. And, uh, and if you want to make donations to the channel, there's a Patreon, uh, uh, usually a Patreon, I think on all our videos, uh, a button where you can make a donation or, or not a PayPal. And then you can join our Patreon and get early access. Do you have any... Uh... Yes, Chris uh, Snodgrass. I love Sweet City Woman, one of my favorites. Thanks, Chris. Uh, James Miklos, one of my favorite Canadian bands out of Calgary before Nickelback. One of my favorite songs, um, Oh My Lady, um, R.I.P. Uh, oh my lady was one of those things where they'd stop the concert and you know Kim would sing it and because get because there's no drums on it and uh, again I talked to Kimberly uh, his name is Kimball and uh, it's an interesting interview he talks about the other the other members of the band and uh, do you have any more? Uh, ooh, no, that's good for now. Okay, we're gonna talk about Ramona, which was a rocker for the Stampeders. And uh, this is uh, Ronnie King's version of his side of the story for the rocker Ramona. Did I put it in here? It is right here. With uh, it's, it's 74 with Ramona, that was another case of just, was that another case of just bouncing out and going, we need another rocker? I know yeah. that's his, but. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a baseline I did not, uh, was not particularly fond of Richard said, and it just go bam, 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 bam. <laughs> that I was raised. I'm, okay, I'd like to be a little more, uh, you know, constructive or whatever else. All of us played by ears. None of us read music. So uh, we just went for it, you know. And so, yeah, Ramona was, uh, I always say, that song's about a prostitute, <laughs> you know. Maybe I might go and see. See, Ramona. <laughs> uh, I never thought of it that way. Um, well, Shannon's going to read the release that the family and the press and or the press released when Ronnie King passed away. It is with sadness and love that we must announce the passing of our longtime friend and bandmate, Cornelius Van Spring, known to most as Ronnie King. The message read... Ronnie died yesterday. He died, of course, on March 4th, as we know, um, at the Peter Lougheed Hospital in Calgary. The sudden drastic turn in his health took us all by surprise. As little as three weeks ago, he was looking forward to doing our final tour with the Stampeders and was in a positive and optimistic state of mind. Sadly, it was not to be. And what is the vibe that anyone gets when we're watching? And we'll put the whole interview up on our Canadian channel in the next few days. The... I can't say this enough. The, the the major vibe of of the channel of of of, the, of these videos rather is just happiness of joy. I mean, you can't help but smile when you're listening to Ronnie King talk about his music. We're up to 1975 now, and I remember I was 15 years old at the time, and I'm still seeing him at this this hockey rink, St. Clair Rink in Northeast New Brunswick, which was in Newcastle, which is now named Miramichi. They always went there. Back in the days when uh, big Canadian bands, remember they had one or two or sometimes three hits every year, would come to your local town. This was a small town. Uh, in 75, they had the, the hit, and he talked about it already, Hit the Road Jack, which was the cover of the Ray Charles song, but of course many people have recorded that song. And Wolfman Jack was on there. Then they had uh, their, their hit New Orleans, New Orleans, as they put it in the song. In 76, they had their last two hits. And we have clips from Ronnie talking about these last two before we let you go. Uh, playing in the band uh, was another one. And here's Ronnie King talking about it. Playing in the band, one of my favorite Stan Peters songs. I just love that song. Nice, um, man. Tell me about tell me about that one. I mean, I love the horns. I just I'm 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 all one of those guys. Before you answer, one of those guys that when the doobies changed, I remember for whatever reason I didn't notice it. When Michael McDonald came in, I'm going. I, they're still a great band. They're a great band, so that I still love them. But I sure. like it when someone adds something to it or something rejigs a little bit. Some fans hate that, as you know. But tell yeah. me about that one. Well, uh, it was when we were going through uh, changes within the band and. Uh, uh, Rich was not that fond of expanding the band as we were and doing and so on. And so uh, uh, our manager said, uh, you know, I know these, uh, they're these horn players. There's club band in uh, Saskatoon. My brother, 
my brother uh, suggests them. It's really good. And uh, if we use the horns or whatever else, they'll open the show for us for, for really cheap <laughs> and so on. So we had these two trumpet players. And I said, well, you know, I, mean, I, I wanted a little bit more like the Memphis horns, you know, saxophone, trombone, et cetera, and so on. I said, well, no, you're going to use these guys. Okay. So there we were with the, and I was even got a review in the billboard or something like that. It said, uh, yeah, the Herb Alpert of rock and roll. <laughs> so, well, geez, you know, I was hoping to use the Memphis horns. <laughs> well, even the tempo of the song I love too. I remember kind of just gallops in. There's just something about it. Cause it was, it went against the type of music that I liked. And I'm, I couldn't help but stare at the speakers when I first heard it going, this is so cool. You know how I wrote that song? Walking. And I was, uh, I was trying to, uh, I was trying to write the lyrics by, by just going. And then I uh, thought, no, that, that's not the lyric line. It's, that should be a horn line. So, Walking. <laughs> now that's a good story. That's amazing. I mean, uh, that's. <laughs> I'd forgotten he told me that. Uh, you know, uh, and again, does Ronnie King, did he not always have a smile on his face? It, it, it's crazy. Um, let's get to some comments. Yeah, Max Brand heard about uh, Ronnie's passing, very sad, met him once at the Chicken Deli 27 years ago in Toronto. Wow. Um, and he also said he did the um, the song at the Chicken Deli sitting in with the carpet frogs. <laughs> uh, Fraser J covers his story a bit off topic, but are you guys going to see Toto? We actually saw Toto last night. Yeah. Uh, they um, opened up for Journey. Um, someone had pulled the full concert on YouTube in a thousand years. We did not hear that last night. Oh, no, that would that would have been another con. Uh, is that the Baton Rouge concert? I'm not sure which the concert we saw the other day, but they played a thousand years on there. Because the, we're in Calgary, uh, just to, to go off topic for a second, uh, I will say Journey was crazy loud. And they were great. I love Journey. They were amazing. But my ears hurt, and I've never... I've never felt, I mean, it wasn't excruciating, but I've never had ear pain like that in my life before. But, um, but except, Arnell, except, except for your Apple Watch kit pain. I know. Have you ever gone to a concert and your Apple Watch tells you if you have 30 minutes of this, you could have ear, hearing damage? And I felt, I felt a little weird stuff. But Shannon Forrest uh, of the band uh, treated us with uh, six tickets and backstage passes, and it was, it was really a, nice. It was amazing. But back to our topic. Fraser just wanted to make sure that we talked about that, and it was a fun night. Uh, but it's in keeping with Ronnie King because Ronnie passed away at, at Peter Lougheed Hospital here in Calgary, which is a half an hour away from where we're at. Uh, two more clips from Ronnie. Uh, Sweet Love Banded was their last big hit in 1976. And we're going to have, uh, and, and after this, by the way, we're going to ask Ronnie, I asked Ronnie, what was the best and worst parts of being in the band, the Stampeders? Remember, for our American friends, they had two hits, uh, um, Sweet City Woman and Hit the Road Jack, a cover of the Ray Charles hit. And here's Ronnie talking about, oh, wrong one, we're talking about, it's u usually human error when these things happen, Sweet Love Bandit. Sweet Love Bandit is another one that I really, because I just, I, uh, I like the, you know, I was just telling Dean McTaggart the other day about the Arrows and I was doing a thing on them and I said, you know what, the, he, they had Earl Seymour, you know, uh, from Toronto, who's also, we've also lost. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I remember thinking, I hated the horns when I was growing up, but then I found Chicago and then I found Blood, Sweat and Tears and then you find Lighthouse. But tell me about Sweet Love Bandit. Oh, uh, just a fast boogie song that I, uh, anything that was close would have been maybe Bette Midler with the Chattanooga Choo Choo and so on, you know, it's because, uh, you know, you wonder where you get your influences and uh, uh, just, just, just came out. Fast. <laughs> go yeah, fast. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ronnie King, who we lost uh, just a few days ago, uh, 76? 76. Pardon my ignorance, but uh, we sometimes we get on here, uh, the seat of our pants. 
I should say I do. Shannon's usually prepared. And we talk about things that are happening in rock and roll, and uh, we've got some more comments. Yeah, David May. Hey, David. I saw the Stampeders at a rare Quebec show. Super nice guys met with fans after the show. He also wrote my favorite Stampeders song, Then Came the White Man. Oh, and and uh, I'm su- I th- surprised. I think we've got... And he's posted that. He posted that maybe a year ago, and, then he, and every few months he would post it uh, about um, uh, natives who have just gotten the short end of the stick. And uh, we're going to... Pl- I want to play one more clip. I think we've got one more. We're, I wasn't sure. When the Stampeders and Rich Dots, and there was three, Kimberly, Ronnie King, and Rich Dots, when, when Rich left to go solo and to become a producer, he had his own studio in Toronto. I remember I was syndicating an all-Canadian content show in the seven, in the 80s. And I was going to Toronto to try to sell the show to Coke, uh, Coca-Cola, that is, and to try to get a sponsorship deal. And the only city we didn't have was Toronto. We had all the major cities across the country. We had a lot of the mid-market cities. And it it meant a lot to me because I was a young broadcaster and I was syndicating a radio show uh, with the music I loved, Canadian music, uh, at an age of, I think I was 25 or something like that. Didn't get Coca-Cola and didn't get Rich Dotson. Rich was just too busy. I called him on the phone. I had his home number and he, he just said, sorry, bud, I just, I've just got too many sessions going on. So I've never gotten him. Uh, so Ronnie King and then Kimberly, their drummer. And this is the uh, clip where it's self-explanatory. I'll let him, uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, okay, give me three seconds. you have any more comments while I'm looking? Ooh, uh, da- uh, David said, looking forward to your Richie and Jim Henman interview. It's coming up in the next week. Uh, we've got, speaking of Canadian content, we've got uh, the three original members. Uh, Miles Goodwin is no longer with us. But the three original members of April Wine, uh, the the Henman brothers, Richie and David, and Jim Henman, their cousin, from that first album. Uh, that's the only time the three Henman family members were in in the band together so we're going to put that out we're hoping next week at the very latest the week after here is our last clip with um with ronnie king what was the to you what's been the best part of being in the stampeders and what's been the most challenging part of being in that band the best part of the stampeders uh has been uh, the fact that we set out to be the beatles and uh, got a small taste of it. And uh, we had our limousine rocked at Ontario Place by 14,000 people and uh, so on else, all by ourselves, in fact. We played there several times, once with the Poppy family, once with uh, et cetera. And, uh, but uh, I was never that fond of the Stampeders name. I always thought it, it held us back, you know? And I, if you if you ask uh, how, why did we not uh, make it you know uh, why were we so underrated in the states and so on you know i feel that that stampeders might have held us back i feel that but i mean we used to have little kids uh, little black kids coming up and saying, hey, man, are you in that band, the Stampeders? And <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we are, all this and that. But uh, so, I mean, the fact that we pretty much got worldwide fame out of it to an extent, uh, that was the highlight, I mean, and, and still is. Uh, to still get remembered after all these years, you know, and have people... Yeah. <laughs> uh, your age, my age, uh, coming up to us and saying, you know, I was a little young uh, when I first saw you guys, and uh, I remember when you played here, there, everywhere, and uh, it was it was very self satisfying. I mean, uh, I, I often I often tear up. You know, uh, I'm a softie, and uh, people come up to me with such things, and I say, thank you, thank you for for remembering us to that extent. Oh, yeah, one of my favorites was. <laughs> it's almost hard. I, I, I've heard, you know, most of the artists that I talk to have at least five, uh, five, 10, 15, 20 years on me. And, you know, so because of, you know, I'm 62. And, mm-hmm. 
they, a lot of artists say, and you've touched on it a little bit there where they'll go, it's almost hard to comprehend that I made a difference in their life. I mean, I know my songs are good and I know they were on the radio, but when you're talking to people face to face and they're saying, you made a difference, man, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly. True. You had an impact, you know, and uh, especially songs like uh, White Man and Carrying On and like that where people uh, say, wow. And that really hit home with me. So, yeah, thank you. What a way to close it off. Seriously. Um, we I wasn't sure how long we were going to be on. And we will post... Oops, I keep forgetting our... our, 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 our uh, we're now using an SLR camera up here, which is a better quality we've camera. So we've got to remember we have to look at the camera <laughs> and not the computer down here. Because the, uh, the our MacBook's a great computer, but it uh, the, the camera on it is not as good. The, the cam thing is not as good yeah it's a camp thing let's call it that um i felt this this interview was a little uh, further back than i thought it was but we never used it this interview has never seen the light of day which sometimes happens with us that we get bombarded by so many interviews the channel rocky street music has become very popular so because of that we get a lot of interviews and we're doing a lot of canadian interviews now and you ain't seen nothing yet but I felt, as you could hopefully tell during the interviews, that I felt it was a cherished moment for me to finally uh, talk to Rich. I would set up an interview with a cohort of mine uh, in Vancouver where I talked to him for about 10 minutes uh, before my friend, radio buddy, uh, talked to, to Ronnie King. So technically, this that was my second interview, but uh, I asked him a few questions. He was really, really nice. But I remember he told me a dirty joke. When I, I just before I handed the phone to my buddy, and like I'm going, I just met this guy, so it, it said an awful lot. Uh, just a few more comments, and then we're going to say goodbye. And we will put on the Canadian channel if you haven't subscribed, Rocky Street Canada. We're going to put the entire interview, which is probably double the size of what you just heard, um, on the internet. So uh, VO2 Maximus, she feeds me love and tenderness and macaroons. What a beautiful, happy lyric. <laughs> Uh, Max Brown said, listen to playing in the band. This song has a two-step polka beat with horns. Uh, and then uh, David said, the Stampeders were on the Sunny and Cher show. Yeah, and were then, they? And then Buddy just says, hey, hi, John Shen. Hi. Oh, uh, oh, Buddy got, yeah. I'm, I, I, was on his, uh, I was on his channel. Buddy, is your, before we let we go, is it under, what's the name of your channel? Is it under your own name? Give you a little plug there. I think it is, but I'm not sure. Buddy, just get back to us and we'll give you a little little plug for your channel. Um, Canadian institution, Ronnie King was, when you have 19 hits in this country, uh, two U.S. hits, uh, Sweet City Woman, number eight, and um, Hit the Road Jack, the, the Ray Charles song, as I keep quoting, that was a number 40 hit, but still technically a hit, and it featured Wolfman Jack, which was really, really cool. So I'm glad of a lot of our American friends know who who Ronnie King was. He was uh, 76 years old, 1947 to 2024, and he was looking forward to another tour. Did Buddy get back to us? Yes, send in my name. Our video will be up on Monday. Thanks. Yeah, no hurry, no hurry, but check it out, Buddy, G-O, what is it? G-O-T-T. Great channel. He interviews a lot of different people. I, I was telling Buddy this before we, I let you go, that I think the star of his channel is basically his personality, which is larger than life. I interviewed him. He used to send me, a, a, send me a, a few sound clips when we were doing Toto things, like celebrating Toto 14 or saying bye to a member or stuff. Buddy was always there for us. So Buddy got, check it out. It's the last comment on here. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. It's been, it's been a heck of a week for us, but we want to thank everyone for coming on. Remember, subscribe to our channels. All the channels are right there underneath. It's the first time we've ever done this. Where it is. We're all three all of three. our logos, uh, and we're, we're big on logos. We like professionally done logos. You handled logos. that really well. You were smooth today. Yeah, I, was, uh, I don't know. I, sometimes I get on here and I, and I do some yawning, but not for Ronnie <laughs> King. Ronnie was a Canadian legend, and a lot. Ian Thomas, I should have brought it on. Ian Thomas wrote this... Uh, for Canadian fans, wrote this amazing thing about spending time with Ronnie King, and it's all on here. We may do another video, uh, probably a produced video, where we'll have musicians in Canada reacting to Ronnie's uh, death. He passed away at 
on uh, March 4th at he was 76 years old remember check out the description if you want to help out the channel there are a lot of things there where you can get a hold of us and support us and we just want to say take good care of yourself and have a good weekend from John and Shannon thank you take care of yourself guys